Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. You may notice that my setup's a little bit different today. I've been experimenting with different camera angles, lighting, and all sorts of things, so it may get silly for a while, but we'll find the right balance. Anyway, on today's episode, I'd like to focus on a new plugin that's coming out soon from Toucan Studios. Now, unless you're living under a rock, and if you do live under a rock, no offense intended, you've likely at least heard of if you're not actively using Toucan Studios plugins. John Matthews is the brains behind Toucan Studios. Hi, everybody. And he continues to impress with outstanding plugins built in JS. Right on the heels of his Series 2 plugins, including the Guitar Station plugin, is the new Bass Station plugin from Toucan Studios. Let's take a look. I'll be playing my Quart A5 Plus Open Pour Amber Bass, which I should probably have in my hands by now, but whatever. I'll start with the plug-in disengaged just so you can hear the natural bass tone. This particular bass has active Bartolini pickups, which I love because it allows me to boost or cut the desired frequency. I'll double check my EQs and make sure that these are centered. And let's run that same song again, and then fire up the bass station plugin and see how it sounds. I definitely should have chosen a chair with no arms before sitting down to play this, but we'll press on. Let's open up the bass station plugin. And you may notice at the top I'm using a preset that I've already created called Dawn Patrol, named after a similar song by a popular metal band. Let's play that same riff again and see how it sounds. That sounds pretty good to my ear. Let's take a look at the controls of the plugin. Just like with all of the previous Series 2 plugins with Toucan Studios, we can click the dialog at the top left to reveal a bit more information. Under Processing, we can have the plugin active on playback, on recording, or on stop. The plugin is pretty lightweight, so I have a really hard time seeing anyone with a computer that's not powerful enough to run this efficiently. We have a section for grouping, scaling options, and I definitely like the automatic scaling. A lot of JS plugins, particularly older ones, are what you see is what you get. But the newer Toucan Studios plugins have automatic scaling, so I can resize from the corner, and the plugin resizes itself accordingly. This comes in really handy if you're working on a 4K screen with display scaling options. And up next in the menu, we've got some options for the fast compressor to place the compressor either ahead of the pre-gain stage of the amp or after the pre-gain stage. The default is after pre-gain, but as we can see in the dialog, we can alt-click the fast comp node to switch back and forth. And finally, we have an option to show info or the help screen. This is currently listed as version zero since as of this recording, it's not released in the public, but we can see mouse modifier options for fine tuned controls of the knobs by holding shift. We can reset any of the knobs to the default position by controlled or command clicking. Knobs can be linked on visible instances. And one of my favorite options, if you're one who's into precision, you can type numbers in for any of the parameters. But more so than just looking at the controls of the plugin, I would assume that most of you would like to hear a bit more sound. Let's take a look and listen. I'll leave all of my controls on the amp where they are for now so we can just take a look at the different styles of amps and see how they sound differently. I'm currently on the third model, which to my understanding is based off of a Marshall guitar amp. I don't have any of the pedals activated right now, so again, with my current setting, my amp sounds like this. Switching to the first amp sim, and I'm not sure what this is based off of, but perhaps some of you can figure it out based on the graphics. And the middle amp sounds a little something like this.
Outside of the three amplifiers, we've also got three different cabinets to choose from. There's the cabinet that I'm currently using, the second cabinet, which I believe may be based off of a Mark bass cab. Sounds a little something like this. And the third cab. In addition to the three different cabs and the three different amp models, we've also got seven different microphones to choose from and two placement options for each microphone. Going back to my preferred cab, and then looking back at our microphone selection, this appears to be possibly modeled after an MD-421, but I could be wrong. Clicking the Move Microphone button toggles from a position that seems to be in front of the cap to a position that's more to the edge of the cone, or possibly somewhere in between. Let's check this same microphone and check the different positions. And moving back to the center. Let's check out some of the other mic options. The first one looks to be modeled after an SM57 and sounds something like this. And when I say sounds like, you have to consider that it's also in the context of the cabinet that I've chosen and the amp model that I've chosen. And moving the microphone. Now we can see on the right side of the plug-in that I am clipping a little bit, and this can be caused by slight differences in the output of the amplifiers. Be sure that as you're changing through your amps that you monitor your input and output and ensure that you're not clipping. I'll go ahead and reset my meters here. Turn down just a hair. And we've already heard what I believe is the 421. Let's take a look at the next one. Move it back to the center, and I'll play that same riff again. microphone up next is what looks like a sure kick mic to me we'll move that back to the center and give this a try that definitely has less of an output than the others let's try the other position I'm not sure what's up with that. That output in the center position for this mic is very low compared to the other state. I don't know if that's a glitch or if it's just a characteristic of this mic. I'll check in with John and see what he thinks about that. Let's move on to the next mic. And moving to the edge. Let's check out the last two mics. Out of those seven, I still favor what looks to be maybe an MD-41. I'll move that back to the center position, or I could just reload my preset. I did briefly mention amp controls earlier, but there's a few things on here I'd like to cover. The fast comp is a great way to compress your bass on input and to help smooth out your tones to where you're hitting the amp consistently. We have a built-in gate, and clicking on the gate brings up the interface to the right, and I very much enjoy this auto-detect. I can just take my hands off the bass, click detect, 
and the threshold will set itself based on any noise level that may currently be flowing through the amp. If you find that the automatic detection was a little bit off, you can always adjust the threshold as well as the release time to suit your needs. And finally, we have an LA3A style compressor that can be configured either after or before the amp. I like to have it after the amp so I've got better control of the affected tone. Down at the bottom, we've got a pedal board and we've got a wah that's got two different modes. Distortion pedal with two different modes looks like Tube Screamer and Distortion. An EQ filter, a phaser, flanger, chorus pedal, and something that I really like, the DI Mixer. This reminds me a lot of Audio Assault's Duality Bass Studio, and it allows you to blend back in some of the dry signal from your bass. We have a crossover control that allows us to select the frequency where the DI Mixer engages, and we can choose whether to have the low or the high side of the crossover mixed in. And then at the bottom of the pedal, we can control how much of the dry signal and the wet signal we'd like to blend together. This way, if you'd like to have a really distorted high end to accentuate the attack of the bass, you can do that with the DI mixer and keep the low end pristine from your bass. Let's turn on this distortion pedal and try one more song and see if we can put this plug in through its paces. If I can get this song right, leave a comment below if you can guess what it is, or what it's supposed to be anyway. That song is incredibly hard and probably best left to Cliff Burton. Let's change amp models and try just a little bit more. Get a bit of compression going there. So far I've quite enjoyed the plugin and I would say that it's on par with several of the other bass plugins that I have. The only complaint, if I can call it that, that I have so far is I notice a lot of lag in the meters in Reaper while the GUI is up and running. If you take a look at both the master fader and the bass track itself, you'll notice a bit of a delay in the movement of the meters. <laughs> stage I don't know if it's something specific to this plugin or if there may be some regression with performance in JS plugins and some of the later Reaper versions, but I'll leave that up to the programmers to figure out. All I can say is that it sounds and operates fine, and that little glitch in the meters doesn't seem to actually affect performance. I do wish that it had a built-in parametric EQ, but I can always add re-EQ after the fact and do whatever I'd like to better tailor my bass tone. <laughs>
Thanks again to John from Toucan Studios for reaching out and asking me to review the plugin. I've still got a few more presets to build to be included with the plugin. Hopefully it'll be ready for production soon. Be sure to keep an eye out on John's YouTube channel for the release. I'll leave a link in the description. I hope this helps. If you like the content you've been seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me a Coffee, I Like Coffee, Patreon, or Super Thanks links below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. Slap at the base. <laughs>